Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I'm going to be telling you all about my May TBR. I have been absent for a month because Brent and I have been house hunting and I'm so excited to say that we found a house and I'm filming from a weird angle because everything is packed. My books are packed. I only kept out the stack that I knew I was going to be reading for sure as my TBR for the month of May. So I definitely have some that I'm just gonna pop the picture up for, but my house is a mess. It's filled with boxes, my apartment, I mean, and we are going to be moving very, very soon. So I took a little bit of a break. I probably will not be posting a whole lot this month either because obviously we're in the process of moving. So keep your eyes open. I will be posting whenever. Don't hold me to anything this month. So my TBR, a little bit smaller than usual. I try to normally have like a ton of options. Oh my gosh, there's a huge spider. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, this month I have a few more books that are large and so I kind of tried to keep my TBR fairly small. So let's talk about the books. The first set of books are for the Buzzwordathon. The word this month is house or home. So I have three books that I'm planning on reading for that. The first one being House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. This is the most intimidating book on my entire TBR, like ever. And I've heard very mixed things about this book. Some people have said this book is life-changing, it gets under your skin, it never leaves you. And some people have said that this was torture to read. So. I'm eager to get into it. It is basically a story. It's very complicated. How to explain it? It's a story about this man, Johnny Truant, who goes to the house of an older man named Zampano who has passed away and he had giant claw marks beside his body that apparently nobody cares about. But he also has a trunk full of papers and envelopes, napkins, things that he wrote on, and it's telling the story of the Navitson record. Now the Navitson record is a film that may or may not actually exist in this world, and this film documents this family as they move into a house. It's Will Navitson and his family. They move into a house and find out that the house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. So the premise of the book is very, very interesting. And throughout this book, there are footnotes, there are like pages with very little writing, there are pages that are like completely backwards, you have to read them in a mirror. And the beginning is more of like a dissertation almost, a discussion on the book or on the film that may or may not exist that nobody can find records of. So it's very interesting. I'm excited to get into it, but very, very intimidated. The second book that has house or home that I would like to read is House of Earth and Blood, which is the first book in the Crescent series, Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. I've never read a Sarah J. Mass book before. This is her first adult novel, but I've heard fantastic things about this. It's also another big one, which is why my TBR is smaller this month but I think that it's gonna be really, really great. It's the story about Bryce, I believe. I don't know a whole lot and I'm not gonna find out a whole lot, but it's a story about Bryce who she encounters a situation with a demon, I believe, and it kind of brings her to this world of like fairies and werewolves. There, I've heard there's pretty much every like monstrous creature you can think of is in this book. So I think it's gonna be great. A wonderful fantasy, the romance, from Sarah J Mass, I've heard is always top tier and I think going into the summer months romance is kind of what I'm looking for so this seems like it'll be a great blend of fantasy and romance. The next book with house or home and the last one that I'll be reading for the month of May is A House at the Bottom of the Lake maybe by Josh Mallerman maybe Again, I don't know a whole lot about this, but it is a novella type thing. It's only like 120 pages, but it is a horror novella about these two 17 year olds who are dating and they go on a date on this lake and they find a house just below the surface of the water and they decide to explore it. And I've heard that it is pretty creepy, but it's another one that's like, some people love it, some people hate it. 
So I want to get into it myself. It'll, I think it'll be short, sweet, and perfect for summertime. Then I will tell you kind of my generic TBR that really doesn't fit with any theme. And that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I've heard fantastic things about the series. Everyone on booktube knows the series, but it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And it's all about Farah, I believe is how you would say it. And she's a huntress. And she's kind of dragged to a magical land of fairies. I've heard that this, not this book specifically, but the series is definitely made more for adults. And like I said, or maybe I didn't say, but she's 19. So this is like a new adult romance. So it definitely has some steamy scenes. And I'm eager to get into it. I think it'll be fantastic. It's everybody loves the series. Everybody. So I can't wait. Another chunker. To sleep in a sea of stars. This was on my TBR for last month because the buzzword was stuff to do with space and it's just so big. I didn't get to it. It's like 900 something pages, I think, 800 something, and it's very science y, so I just didn't get to it. But I am really excited to read it. I think it's going to be something I really love. I've heard it's action packed and it keeps you going throughout the entire story. So I'm hopeful. Also, um, Booked and Busy here on YouTube really, really loves this and speaks very highly of it. And so I'm going off of their recommendation that I will love this because I tend to love similar things to them. So I'm planning on picking this up. This is a first encounter story, I believe, about a woman named Kira who is traveling through space and is supposed to be, I believe, exploring this planet to find out if it can be terraformed or something like that. And while on this planet doing this work, encounters an alien, and it's kind of a story about first encounters and the horrors that follow after that. So it sounds fantastic. It's written by Christopher Paolini, who wrote the Aragon series. And Christopher Paolini, this is his first adult science fiction. So very excited for this one. Next is my book of the month haul from last month, which... A haul will be coming at some point. My books are all packed, but keep your eyes open this month. Hopefully this month or early next month, I will have a complete haul for you from all the stuff that I've hauled recently. Here's a little sneak peek. The first one I would like to read is Love in Color, Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold by Bolu Babalola. And I'm so excited for this. It's a collection of short stories, which I've really been enjoying. And it's a collection of mythical romance retellings. So mythical tales retold in kind of a perspective of people of color. And it includes so many stories that I have heard of and so many that I haven't. So some of them I have heard of that you might have heard of as well are Sherazad, which is A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. So that's what inspired Aladdin. So this is the retelling of that. Psyche, which is a Greek myth retelling. I love Greek myth. Nefertiti. It's like Egyptian myth retelling. And then there's lots that I haven't heard of. And I do know that the author wrote um, a couple of them. So some of these are retellings and some are original mythical stories by this author. I just think it is going to be so beautiful and astounding. I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet, but I was obsessed with this cover. Had to pick it up. And I think that short stories all about romance and love are going to be awesome for me to read kind of intermittently throughout the month. I think it's going to be one that I read a little bit here, a little bit there. But overall, I cannot wait to pick it up. Then I have my other book of the month choice, People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I haven't read Beach Read by Emily Henry, but I've heard that that one is sadder than this one. And honestly, I just have a month coming up. So I need happy stuff to kind of counteract House of Leaves and some of the other horror stuff I'm reading. So People We Meet on Vacation. It's a story about friends to lovers, it's a romance, about friends to lovers who are kind of friends to enemies because they get into a big fight on their previous vacation. Now they are, the girl in this friendship is trying to make up with this guy and takes this vacation together, I believe, to try to save their relationship. Sounds great. I've heard wonderful things. And then that brings me to the Asian Readathon hosted by With Cindy, where I'm going to try to pick up five different books that are all by Asian authors, all of different ethnicities or from different home countries. So 
let's go through my TBR for that and the prompts that I will be hoping to meet. And I have a couple books that could fit in multiple areas. I have one book as like a backup standby because it's short. So I'm just going to tell you everything. I'm going to lay it all on the table. We'll see what I do. The first prompt is to read any book by an Asian author. That gave me so many choices. So I think the book that I am going to pick up for read a any book by any Asian author is The Henna Wars. Adiba is a Bangladeshi author. Now, this is a young adult, maybe middle grade LGBTQ romance contemporary story about two girls who both open a henna shop at their school. And one of the girls, Nishat, is really struggling with her sexuality just in terms of like how to communicate that to her family because her family really believes that Muslim girls are not lesbians and she's having a hard time telling that to her family. So this story is kind of their romance and it's kind of an enemies to lovers because they both open a henna store as this like school project. And Nishat kind of sees this other girl as appropriating Nishat's culture because henna is something that is very important to Nishat and her family. So I think that it's going to be impactful, sweet. It looks, the cover is stunning and it looks like a perfect book for me. So I cannot wait to get into this. I've heard great things. The next prompt is to read any book with an Asian protagonist. And I believe that I'm going to read The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Helen Huang is a Vietnamese author, and The Kiss Quotient is a story about a girl who is neurotypical. She is on the autism spectrum, has autism spectrum disorder, and she is not really into dating, but her mom keeps setting her up with people, and so in order to kind of appease her mom, she decides she's going to try to start dating, and she hires a male escort to help her figure out what dating looks like, what it is like to be in a relationship with somebody, and I think that it is going to be so good. I've heard amazing things about it. I've heard it steamy, steamy, steamy. Gosh, am I ready? I love romance. It's so good. Such a beautiful genre. Can't wait for this book. Next is to read any book in your favorite genre, and my favorite genre is fantasy, and so I am planning on picking up Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan, and Natasha is a Malaysian Chinese author, and this book is a young adult fantasy. It is also LGBTQ, which I think is gonna be amazing. This book is all about this world where women and girls are chosen as consorts for the king and you're not really given a choice you're kind of forced into it and it really discuss discusses the trauma that ensues with that kind of society where the king just gets to choose and handpick women and take them away from their families and this book focuses on Lei who is the main character of the book and she is chosen by the king due, because of her golden eyes and her mother was a consort to the king as well and so she's kind of thrust back into that trauma of experiencing the same traumas that her mom went through and while she's being sent on this like traumatic journey she falls in love i mean can you even with that synopsis i can't wait to read this. It's been on my TBR for so long and I just knew that this was the perfect excuse to pick it up. I need to read it. I'm so excited. The next book that I want to pick up is for the prompt, read a nonfiction book by an Asian author and I'm planning on picking up Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. And Michelle Zahner is a Korean author. This is, I don't know a whole lot about it, but Michelle Zahner is a musician and Crying in H Mart is kind of a memoir about her life as well as kind of a food and drink um, cultural book. And so I think it will be such a beautiful story about family, food. She talks about grief and music as well as like endurance and passion. I think it'll be fantastic. I can't wait. I have the audiobook for this and I'm so, so, so excited. And then the last prompt is to read a book that is non-US centric written by an Asian author. So The Henna Wars would definitely count for this because The Henna Wars is set in Ireland, I believe. And 
that is kind of my first choice. But if I have time and can fit it in, I would also love to read Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tozikazu Kawaguchi. And this is set in Tokyo. So it's non-US centric. And this is kind of a short book all about this cafe where people can sit down at the cafe for a cup of coffee and customers have this unique experience where they can travel back in time. And so the book follows four different visitors, each of whom is hoping to make use of the time travel aspect of this cafe. And it's really only, there's one stipulation where you have to be back before your coffee gets cold. And so it follows them through this kind of experience and it is a fantasy it's considered magical realism i think the time travel aspect is really only used kind of as a plot point i don't think it's going to be super science fictiony i think it's more of a book about people and humans and characters and why everyone is traveling back in time and what they're hoping to accomplish I just can't wait to read it. I've heard great things. I think I heard it originally from Emma at Drinking By My Shelf. So I can't wait to pick it up and it's short. I'm hoping to get time, have time to get to it this month because I think it would be fantastic. That is my entire May TBR. Of course, as always, I'll probably read something here and there, change it up a little bit, but this is my goal is to read all of these books. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for all of you who asked where I was and cared about me not making videos for a month. Hopefully I'll have more content for you in the next month. But for now, this is it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone who you think would enjoy it. And I will see you next time. Bye friends.